Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Prairie Fine Art. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on drawing this baby longhorn in graphite on vellum paper. Before we get started, I want to give you a couple of tips on getting your initial drawing onto your paper. I've been teaching painting and drawing for about 15 years now. Using a projector or a light box is a really hot subject with a lot of artists. They will accuse those of us who use them or have students use them in learning to draw as having no talent, it takes no skills, you're not improving your own skills, it's cheating, you're the devil, I think I've heard it all. But the fact of the matter is, one of the fastest ways to have students improve their drawing skills is to have them trace things. If I have a student freehand something 10 times, by the 11th time, hopefully they've improved some. It's kind of hit or miss, they may or may not have. They may just continuously make the same mistake over and over again. If I have them trace that same thing 10 times, the 11th time should be a massive, massive improvement. It should be near perfect by then. What you're doing when you trace things is forcing your brain to see things as they really are. We have a tendency to think a tree looks a certain way or the human eye looks a certain way. And in fact, they generally aren't even close. When you've traced it over and over again, you have forced yourself to see what they really look like and to notice details that you wouldn't have necessarily noticed without it. In my experience, those who are completely against using projectors and light boxes don't have enough experience with them to understand what they can and can't do for you. They may have used them once or twice, but that's not really enough to, to really get a full grasp of what they are and aren't doing for the artist. They're not doing the work for you. They are not an instant win button. If you can't draw your finished product, it's going to be obvious that you're missing stuff, that you're not getting all of the details in there. While it is helping you to learn to get those details in there, like I said, not an instant win button. Now these tools are not meant to be a crutch. You do need to be able to freehand things on your own. So continue to work on freehanding and drawing from life in addition to using these tools. Using both of them together will really help improve your drawing skills a lot faster than if you were only using one or the other. I have new painting and drawing videos every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with my newest work. When starting a graphite piece, I like to first block in a few of my darkest areas. This makes judging my values easier as I work. When we look at a mostly white paper, it's easy for us to think that whatever we are doing is too dark, when in reality we aren't nearly dark enough. I also tend to start in the upper left hand corner of my paper as I work my way down. This way I'm not dragging my hand or arm across the finished portions of this piece as I work. I started off with my General's Layout Extra Black Pencil and used a blending stump to soften out the area. For very dark areas, I switched to my mechanical pencil using AN4B lead. This is a very dark lead. For the majority of this piece, I will be using Prismacolor Turquoise pencils in 2H and 6H in addition to my General's Layout Extra Black and Mechanical Pencil. Working on the fence, I start light and darken it up as I go. It's much easier to darken an area up than to lighten it if you went too dark in the first place. Notice that I keep a piece of tracing paper under my hand and arm as I work. This prevents me from smudging my work and keeps the oils from my hand off the paper. I prefer tracing paper to a regular scratch piece of paper because the transparency allows me to see what's under it, helping me to judge my values better as I work. A lot of artists will work on one small portion of a piece until it's finished before moving on. I jump around quite a bit, building up in layers, much how I do when I paint. One way is not necessarily better than the other, it's just a matter of what works best for you. If all of the details in a piece get overwhelming, breaking it down into one square inch at a time can be helpful. Your blending stumps are not just for blending. A dirty stump can also be used for lightly applying graphite to your paper. This is why I keep a separate blending stump that is very dirty and one that's cleaner. I use my erasers for detail work almost as much as I do the actual pencils. For the chain, be careful to leave areas that are very light as your shine marks. Now that my background is in, I will get started on the baby longhorn himself. I will go back later and adjust my shading on the background once the longhorn is in. I start with his nose because it's one of the darker spots, again making it easier for me to judge the rest of my values.
working in graphite, it's very important to have good contrast between your light and dark areas. Make sure that your darks are truly dark and that your light's very light. If you keep all of your values mid-range, your finished piece, no matter how well drawn or detailed, is fairly boring to look at. Contrast will make the piece much more interesting, holding your viewer's attention longer. As I work, I am lightly marking in the fur around his face. Pay attention to the direction of the fur. Be careful to leave the white marks very white. It's easy to blend them into the dark areas and lose your contrast. Once I have everything generally mapped out, I go back and start to focus more on my contrast, darkening and lightening areas as needed, and adding more detail. On this guy, I sprayed a workable fixative over him when I was nearly done. I then used white ink to bring out a few hairs on his head and his whiskers. I also used the white ink to add some highlights to the chain that he's gnawing on.